Hello, my friends, hello, and welcome once again to the exciting Vaughn Manor. And it's another action packed adventure. Hall of Adventure, that is. So I didn't think I was going to have anything up today because time is limited and I've had no time to prepare anything. But I did get some books in. So, you know, Halls of Adventure require zero preparation and minimal time. So here I am with Roger, my friend Roger. You, you did get a few things, including a couple, a couple comic books. Good job finally, finally getting that done. So yeah, we've got a few things, not too much, but a few. So let's, let's talk about what has arrived in the manor this week. Another bit of an eclectic mix here today. So I always talk about the comic stuff first. So let's talk about the comic book stuff that has arrived in the manor. First thing that has arrived is Iron Man. This is an Iron Man epic collection, Battle Royale. Battle Royale, Iron Man, Epic Collection, Volume 5. This is uh, the comic books that were published between 1972 and 1974. Iron Man, number 47 through 67. So a big chunk of Iron Man. And it's good stuff, actually. This, has, this actually has the very first appearance of Thanos, uh, who we all know from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So there's some good good stuff in here, some fun fun stuff in this particular epic collection. I like all these old Iron Man comics. So here you go. Iron Man. Everybody likes Iron Man, right? Now the next thing I got is pretty cool. And I got this specifically for Book Trek 2022. Yes, Book Trek is returning. I don't know if you remember Book Trek 2021. But Book Trek is returning and it's returning in August. So Garbogist and Book Trek are happening at the same time. And what I got, one of the things I got for Book Trek, I thought was pretty cool. It's a comic book. It is Star Trek and the Legion of Superheroes, which is a combination I never thought I would actually see in my lifetime. And yet a combo that makes a kind of strange sort of sense. I don't know if it's going to be any good, but here it is, I've got it. So this is going to be probably my first book trek book for book trek 2022 it'll be well it should be interesting let's put it that way so yeah there you go that's all the comic related stuff i got this week i did get a few other things though so let's see what else did i get i got three books by an author i've never read but they look cool so I got him. Uh, this author is S.A. I don't know if it's Sidor or Sidor. I'm going to call him S.A. Sidor, even though I have no idea if that's how you pronounce his name. But this is the first book I got from this guy. This is Fury from the Tomb, which is a very pulpy pulp type book, it looks like. There were a couple books in this series. This is the Institute for Singular, Singual, the Institute for Singual Antiquities. Sing singular ant antiquities. I can, I can barely speak as usual, but it looked pretty cool. I mean, look at that awesome cover. How bad could it be with a cover like that? Come on, it's got to be awesome, right? And I, the reason I got it is because I think I saw a book hauled on. It came from the page from this guy. Great, great booktube channel. I will plug it once again. It came from the page. You should all watch that channel because it's awesome. And I think, I think that's where I saw this guy. And so, yeah, I got a couple books from him. So it, the Fury from the Tomb. The Fury from the Tomb. There you go. That should be awesome. Now there was a sequel. Like I said, there was two of these. That is The Beast of Nightfall Lodge. Again, with a really awesome cover, The Beast of Nightfall Lodge. So that looks really cool. So there you go. Another S.A. Sidor book. Hope this guy's good because I got a couple of his books. And I also have another book from this guy, which is not part of this series. And there's something I don't like about this book, but it has nothing to do probably with the author. So 
that is this book. This is Arkham Horror, The Last Ritual by S.A. Sidor. So obviously this takes place in a Lovecraftian universe. It's actually a macabre mystery based in the world of the best-selling Arkham Horror games. So it's in the world of the Arkham Horror games, which are, of course, based off the work of H.P. Lovecraft. Hey, guess whose name isn't anywhere on or in this book? H.P. Lovecraft's name. And that is really, really annoying. Now, I know all of H.P. Lovecraft's work is in the public domain, but if you're using his ideas and his work, you should say so. Otherwise, it's dishonest and lame. I'm assuming they didn't because he is a problematical author now because he was all racist, and he was. But that has nothing to do with the fact that he created everything that they're basing this book off of. I mean, he, he created the world that they are using. So it's really annoying that they don't even mention, oh, hey, Lovecraft came up with all these ideas, and this is a Lovecraftian novel. Again, I don't blame S.A. Sidor for this because I suspect it's the publisher and not the author's idea to not mention Lovecraft anywhere. But I've looked, and I don't see Lovecraft's name anywhere around this book. So, yeah. That sucks, and you guys who printed this book, you suck for not doing that. So, just so you know. But the book could be great itself. The novel itself could be really good. I hope it is, but yeah, that's really annoying to me. So, there's that. Got a couple other things here that are pretty interesting. Uh, this next one comes from Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the creator of Sherlock Holmes. This is another character created by Sherlock, created by Sherlock Holmes, created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Sherlock Holmes didn't create this guy. Sherlock Holmes isn't actually real, but Sir Arthur Conan Doyle created this character, and that would be the complete Brigadier Gerard. The complete Brigadier Gerard. This is a series of stories which take place in the Napoleonic Wars with this French guy, Brigadier Gerard. And I have read some of these stories, but I've never read them all. I've read them in different anthologies. One here, one there. Uh, if you have any old classic adventure anthologies, you'll probably find one of these stories in there. I get the feeling that this was one of his more popular characters. Of course, he doesn't touch Sherlock Holmes. But Sir Arthur Conan Doyle wrote a lot. I mean, this guy wrote so many books. You can get just about, if not all of them, in ebook form. But I wanted a paperback at least of this. I wanted a physical copy of this. And it's a really nice one, actually, in that it has all of the original illustrations from the Strand, which is really cool. So not only do we have all the stories, we have all of the it looks like all of the original illustrations from the Strand Magazine, where these were originally published. And I've enjoyed this character a lot when I've read, when I've read his adventures in various anthologies. So it's really cool to finally, finally get them all in one book. You don't see this lying around in the wild too often, if ever. I'm not sure I've ever seen a copy of this in the wild, so I had to order it. Um, and I'm glad I did. Independently published, I believe, of course, but uh, pretty nice, pretty nice volume. So this next one, I had an ebook copy of it, and I had no real reason to get a physical copy of it, except that I just wanted one. You know how it goes. This is a book I've been wanting to read, and I was thinking, you know, if I do read it, I would prefer it probably in a physical copy. I don't know why, I just wanted it that way. And this is The Man Who Laughs by Victor Hugo, a romance of English history. So this is, I suppose, one of his lesser known works, The Man Who Laughs. They did make a silent film off of this, which uh, you'll, see, you'll see photos of that now and again because the character in the book, or in the film, excuse me, looks so much like the Joker from the Batman. 
And in fact, the Joker was partially based, I believe, on the film version of The Man Who Laughs, his, his look anyway. But I've never read the book by Victor Hugo, and I've always wanted to. There are a couple of Victor Hugo books I haven't read. I have not read this one. I have not read Toilers of the Sea. And I want to read both those books. And so, yeah, I got this book. This is a print-on-demand hardcover. It's actually pretty nice. It's actually an, a nice edition of it. However, it does not tell you who the translator of this is. So I don't know if it was just an anonymous translation or if the translator was known and it just wasn't included. I'm assuming this is a very old, tiny translation, probably from way back, because this is not any kind of classic that you can find anywhere, and I've looked. It's not a Penguin classic. It's not published by Oxford or Bantam or anybody else that I can tell that j does classics. So The Man Who Laughs, perhaps, is not considered to be, by these major publishers, a classic work, or at least they don't think they could sell it for some reason. I'm not sure why. So I look forward to reading it and making, my, making up my own opinion about the book and whether the book's any good. But I've been looking forward to it for a while, so yeah. Victor Hugo's The Man Who Laughs. We'll see. It could just it could just suck terribly, and that's why there are no classics editions of it. We'll see. We'll see. Now the the last few things here I got at a little free library. Now, the little free libraries in my neighborhood pretty much never have anything good, like ever. Uh, usually they will have you know, the little free libraries will have books about yoga and they'll have cookbooks and they'll have self-help books. Um, I mean, stuff like that, you know, barbecue books. I mean, just, or just like weird thrillers or something that, you know, James Patterson is always making an appearance. Y you get what I'm saying. Never anything, almost never anything I want to read. This week, though, I scored big time. And in fact, the best thing I got this week was from a little free library. So I'll show you a couple of the little paperbacks I found, which, you know, are the paperbacks right up my alley. And one is the 11th annual, the year's best, best science fiction. And this one is edited by Judith Merrill. And what year was this? It's got a lot of great authors in it. This was published in 1967. So 1967, the year's best SF from 1967. I don't think I have this one. I have a best of 1967, but it's not edited by Judith Merrill. So it's a different collection, I think. And this is beat up, of course, but you know, it's a free vintage paperback of science fiction stories, which is amazing. I mean, I never find stuff like this in little free libraries ever. It's way cool. So this made my day. And the next one is just as cool as that one. This is Isaac Asimov Presents The Great SF Stories, Volume 9, which are stories from 1947. So this was a series edited by Isaac Asimov and Martin H. Greenberg, where they reprinted a bunch of stories from, from the early, early days of science fiction, this being 1947. I love vintage science fiction. If you watch my channel at all, you know that. Love it. Love it. Vintage science fiction, 20th century science fiction. That's my favorite kind of thing. So, of course, great science fiction stories from 1947. I, I'm going to want to read it. And who's in here? I might as well look because I can't remember. We got Isaac Asimov himself, Paul Anderson, William Tenn, H. Beam Piper's in here. Uh, Jack Williamson's in here. Ray Bradbury with Zero Hour is in here. Eric Frank Russell, Theodore Sturgeon. So yeah, some great, great authors are in here. So that was really cool. But I really hit the jackpot with this final book. And I can't believe I found this book because it's the best thing I've gotten in a long time. And that would be the Science Fiction Encyclopedia now, what makes this extra cool, besides it just being the science fiction encyclopedia, is that this is the science fiction encyclopedia from 1979, which means there's a 
this is all classic science fiction. Every bit in here is classic science fiction, my kind of stuff. And I've gone through it and it's just so amazing. I mean, it has a bunch of stuff which I'm sure, I'm sure would not be in later editions uh, of this, of this book. <laughs> Got the lost world over there. I mean, there's just, just all kinds of just cool stuff in here. Every classic science fiction author you could think of is in here. Uh, classic science fiction movies. It talks about all the classic science fiction magazines. I mean, just so much cool stuff in here. And I imagine as these editions went into the future that a lot of the classic material was left behind to put in more modern material because there's only so much room. So I was, this is like the perfect year, 1979, because it's got all of that early 20th century stuff in here that I love and I'm interested in. And like I said, I've gone through this thing, I spent a lot of time with this book this week when I should have been reading Westerns for June on the Range. Uh, I I was looking through this a lot. I and I've had a great time just looking up authors and just reading various things in here. So this was just like way cool. So yeah, the science fiction encyclopedia from 1979. I it's the best thing I've gotten in a long time. So yeah, there's that. And it it already had all this weird packing tape on it. So I think whoever owned this in the time that they owned it, you know, they really, they really liked it. So yeah, that's it. That's it for today. I can't believe I've gone on 17 minutes. This is twice as long as I thought I would take. I just go on, man. I should have a Sunday Penguin up tomorrow. I should. And it's going to be a different Sunday Penguin. It's going to be an interesting one this week. And later on in the upcoming week, I'm going to have a June on the Range video coming up. I've got a Robert E. Howard video talking about the first Conan story, Phoenix on the Sword. Although I don't know if I'll be able to get it out Monday or not. We'll see. I'll try. Uh, and some other just action-packed things coming up on my channel. On Wednesday, I should, if everything goes correctly, as it should, I should be making a guest appearance on Mike's book reviews, the other Mike, the more, the more popular mic on his uh, Talk About Nothing segment I should be on there on Wednesday night. We'll see. That'll be fun. That'll be exciting. Yeah. So, yeah, tune in next week. I will catch you next time.